We had just told you that you had to lose, use low frequency. Why? Because you want a big Delta T. You don't want a big Delta E. Delta E gets in your way, tears you up. So the optics board never see this. That is so far in the grass can't even measure it where they're at. They never thought about doing it at 400 hertz. You go home and try it in your laboratory. And then sit on the side laughing for the next two, three hours. And how silly we've all been for years. And how easy it is to do it. I will tell you, if you pursue that, you can take a flashlight battery and levitate a battleship. And I will not discuss that further. Because then you're going to ask me about the Philadelphia experiment. And I'm going to tell you I don't know anything about that. The USS Eldridge fused together with the ship still alive but with limbs sealed to the metal, while others were driven mad by what they experienced. In 1943, the U.S. Navy was conducting top-secret experiments in the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard designed to render vessels completely invisible to enemy radar by harnessing immense electromagnetic forces. This was another one of the false claims that the corridor crew guy Nico made, saying there was no parallax. There actually is proven parallax that you see here. Um, so that's pretty incredible here that when you see this. Now let's watch it again. We see our orbs, we see them spinning. Look at this very, there's definitely purpose here. We can see this mouse here moving around. Um, and now the orientation changes, like they're getting ready for something here. It changes right here and they go vertical. And now they're spinning vertically at slightly at an angle. And our drone is somewhere right off the screen over here. Now here it comes, the zap. You see that illumination? Accurately illuminate the clouds. Welcome back to the coolest channel on YouTube, man. What an amazing day to be alive. What an amazing time to be alive. You know what I'm saying, man? Look, we all woke up again. We all meeting here again on another video. I appreciate y'all. The vibe is always right. Just know if you're going through a tough time, we're going through this thing called life together, people. Don't skip anything in this video because look, y'all know how I put these things together. Psst say less you feel me you'll be missing something and you'll be asking a lot of damn questions <laughs> let's get this video right here to 20,000 likes you know what i'm saying share with your friends and your family you know and don't believe anything you see on these videos make sure you go out here and do your own research so you can come to your own conclusion about things this is just a start a conversation with like-minded people good vibes only let's get it TikTok. it's 2023 right correct me if i'm wrong it's 2023 right so i've been talking about jackson mississippi and somebody brought this to my attention now, I'm bringing it to your attention. Let me pitch myself down to a little guy so I can explain. This is the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. 90% black people, 10% white people. This is the governor of Mississippi. And let me tell you what these racists... I almost cussed TikTok. My fault. My fault. <laughs> Motherfuckers do. In the city, Jackson, Mississippi, 90% <laughs> black people, 10% white people... Black police officers can no longer pull over white people. What? Huh? What year is it? 2023? Listen, black officers can no longer pull over white people in Jackson, Mississippi. Because these two allow Jackson, Mississippi to separate its justice system by race. White supremacy was powerful enough to separate a justice system by race in a town that only has 10% white people, 90% black people. So white people don't go to the black court and black people don't go to the whites court. Black officers don't pull over white people, but I bet you white officers still pull over the black people. This is 2023 rolling into 2024. And y'all wonder why my page is so much about race. Foolishness, stop making it about race. No. When y'all stop being so damn racist, I'll do that. But in the meantime, if you want to support me for free, double tap the screen, share, and comment. And if you're feeling generous, you can send gifts to this video. And if you're really feeling generous, TikTok, add a tip jar to my front page. So you can go to my front page and place any donation you like. Let me know what you think about this racist situation in Jackson, Mississippi, in the comments. I'm gonna be fair enough on this one. Like they both came to that conclusion. That's 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 fucking wild. Like how y'all feel about it in the comments down below? That shit's <laughs> no wonder why it's so much bad shit going on out there in Mississippi. Like I know, like if I have to drive somewhere, I'm gonna drive right around that motherfucker or take a boat somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not. I, I'm good, bro. Like the vibe is all fucked up over there. That's crazy. Like you think that's not possible in today's time?
I take that back. We didn't see some crazy stuff on these videos. My bad. <laughs> a Fox News alert. New video released of an underground secret Chinese bio lab in California. According to a new report from the House Select Committee on China, investigators found dangerous pathogens, some with HIV, others with COVID, and some labeled Ebola while examining the lab. The committee releasing more details about the agent of potential bioterror. They still fucking with Ebola? And Kevin Cork is here with the latest. Kevin. Boy, well, what a story I have for you tonight. Now, according to that House Committee report released again today, thousands, I said thousands of vials of biological substances, including some labeled HIV and others, found in a freezer marked Ebola, were found inside a secret Chinese-owned bio lab in the state of California, which, according to investigators... Inexplicably, the CDC and the FBI initially refused to investigate. The illegal lab was operated in the city of Reedley, California. That's just southeast of Fresno. In its 42-page report, the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party, which launched its own investigation into the matter back in September, detailed some shocking findings, including, as you pointed out, the discovery of several potentially infectious agents at the lab, including SARS, chlamydia, HIV, E. coli, hepatitis B and C, dengue, rubella, and malaria. Hold up now. Hold up, hold up. Did he say dengue? Hold on, hold on. Uh, no. Uh, dengue? What is that? I gotta look that up, y'all. I'm sorry. Like, is this something that they inject you with and then you gay? Like, oh, got you. Let me hit you with that dengue. Then you, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Because y'all know they got a thing called the gay bomb, right? Like, look that up. It's crazy. Like, it's not it's not a fake thing. It's an actual real thing. It's documents on it. It's crazy. It's, it's probably not that, though, y'all. I hope not. That's crazy. In July, under a court order, this is really interesting, under a court order, local officials contracted uh, a hazardous waste removal and the destruction of about 140 tons of lab equipment and 440 gallons of medical and biological waste found at that site. And perhaps most shocking of all, the CDC, according to lawmakers, refused to even test samples of those unlabeled vials at all, even after the city promised to pay for it all. Lastly, a Chinese national who entered this country from Canada using a false name and ID has well been arrested in connection with this lab. It is an unbelievable story and one that I think is certainly deserving of further investigation. I second that. That is an insane story. Thank yeah. you, Kevin, for telling mm -hmm. about us tonight. Breaking news coming out in the past 48 hours that the next okay. pandemic is already on the way. And they're saying this is disease X that could kill up to 50 million people. They're saying that the death toll could easily dwarf. Is X speaking in X like the, the, the changing of Twitter to X? Does that correlate? I don't know. But that I'm of what we experienced with COVID-19. Now, as I mentioned, this is just coming out in the past 48 hours. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering for you what exactly disease X is and all the details of what they're saying is going to be the next pandemic. Now, if you didn't already hear, take a look at this just in the past couple weeks. So this coming out September 18th of 2023, what to know about Nipah virus amid the outbreak in India. And we're hearing that there are lockdowns taking place due to this virus and they're saying don't worry they believe they have it under control and contained but here's the concerning issue with this disease the virus has a fatality rate of 40 to 75 percent according to the cdc nearly half of the people that contract this virus they do not make it and they're concerned what if something like this were to outbreak on a global scale we can't afford to catch that shit at all like and they're saying it's just a matter of time. Now I'm going to be sharing with you these articles, putting them on the screen, reading right from them, linking them in the description. But right now, all you got to do is go on to Google and type in Disease X, and you will see tons of articles that have come out in the past 48 hours. You'll see this trending all over Google, and that is because in the past 48 hours, who and UK experts have warned that Disease X is essentially here, and we're expecting an outbreak that will be global, that will dwarf that of COVID-19. They're saying it will be a repeat and probably surpass that of the 1919 Spanish flu. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna be covering all the details for you so you can know exactly what's going on, and I know this is not what anybody wants to hear, 
Uh, but do me a favor, if you appreciate the updates, keeping you aware of what's going on in our world, smash the like button for me. Helps out the YouTube channel a ton. Thank you so much. Just takes a second. Hit subscribe to stay up to date. I'll let you know everything that's going on in our world, with our economy, the United States, social security system, all of this. I'll keep you up to date. And with that being said, though, let's go ahead and get you caught up on the latest. Let's go ahead and dive. You know what's bad about that? Like, you know how some people be afraid to go to the doctor and get their blood work? You know, like... They be like, damn, I just smashed somebody to condom pop. Nigga, I might have AIDS, right? <laughs> hey, 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 everybody that been there, right? <laughs> I might be dying. Like, I know I done had a heart palpitation because, oh, I've been feeling a little weird after that pop, condom pop. You be diagnosing yourself. You Then you Google it and Google it make that shit worse. I bet. That's how most of us end up in the hospital anyway. We Google some shit. They gave you the worst case scenario. And now you in the hospital getting shit checked out. But look, I almost don't even want to update on that. I want to act like that shit never happened, right? X. Like, it's a lot of correlations with, with X. I can get into that in another, another video. Y'all let me know in the comments down below. Why is he so nervous? I know why he's so nervous. Do you know why he is so nervous? China is meeting, or oh. had a meeting in California with Biden, allegedly Biden. But the question I ask you is, is there a conflict? Isn't China backing Russia? And isn't Russia backing... And Iran? And attacking Ukraine, but we defend Ukraine? Oh, he know it looks what it looks like. Let me tell you something, all these wars. What if I told you, and this is my theory, this is my theory, it's a theory. There are no wars. What if I told you, and this is my theory, this is my theory, there are no borders. And what if I told you, they're all in on it. What if I told you that? Would you believe me? Nah, that's crazy. Nah, let me tell you this real quick. They displaced, and you can look this up, even Joe Rogan has spoken on it. They displaced all the homeless just for the visit of Xi Jinping, a democratic state, which means if they did ethically do it ethically, they placed them in homes, which we don't think they did ethically because they burned some areas and then fenced them off. Doesn't that not sound like North Korea to you? When you come visit and other countries come visit, they make their heavily police communist country look better than it really is. Y'all ever seen the movie The Communists? Something you should look at. America did that same play. So what does that say about the state or country you're in? Police state. We're no different. And you don't know it. You like to say America's the greatest country of all. <laughs> <laughs> Wake the fuck up. How high is inflation? Middle class, which is the majority of Americans, you're being wiped out to the poor class. And you're still distracted by the by the fear-mongering war machine or propaganda. And all your energy is attached to your neighbor. And we're here to help. Wake the f Well guys, as Elon Musk tried to break through the firmament again, well, if you weren't aware, today, November 18th, 2023, SpaceX Starship rocket launch was today. But here's some video footage of the launch today. But before I show you, can you tell me what this hit? I know the other half of the rocket keeps going, but can someone tell me what this is hitting right here? Here's a close up of it. But before I show you, does it look like it's stuck in something? Like, I don't know, y'all let me know. In my opinion, 
They hit the firmament. Blows up. Stuck in it and tried blowing it up. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. But she and in an interview, he tried to say that, oh, you know, they just, he, he shaped it that way because he just wanted to, some, some shit, right? To try to take, you know, I, try, I think he tried to misdirect people, to be honest with you. But that is like a projectile for a bullet. And, and you see how it's split, right? You know how a bullet is shot. A lot of people think the whole bullet comes out and hits you. No, it's the projectile, a little piece of the bullet that comes out that hits you and does all the damage. The back piece falls on the ground or it's left in your gun, depending on the type you got. The projectile came out and the rest of it went where, you know, where to explain where these pieces of the, these aircrafts go. They go to the same spot in the ocean, but it is what it is. Y'all keep, keep on keeping on. Share this with someone. And also, if you're not already <laughs> following me, follow me so you never miss a video. And like always, God bless. Wake right, the this fuck up. Elon Musk is rocking, right? I have a real question for this shit. Because I'm questioning everything. Why does it look like a big ass bullet? Y'all ever think about that? Look at this shit. These are the other rockets. Don't that shit just look like a big ass bullet, right? Now, peep this. Have y'all ever asked yourselves why they don't use space shuttles anymore? Like, the space shuttles that's supposed to, like, take astronauts to space? Because these... This shit don't look like it's designed to take a human to space or a group of people to space. You feel me? All right, listen, right? The last time they had a space shuttle run was back in 2003 and it ended in 2004 due to the expense of it to make it safe. Hmm. The expense of it to make it safe. Do y'all understand like how much money they be having and we just sent bill billions over there to Ukraine like over and over and over and over and over again? People still living in the streets over here. A lot of people, the middle class is being wiped out. You think they don't give a fuck? Let's stop playing these games. When is the last time we even heard of anyone going to space, though? We know rockets been shot up there, but when is the last time a person been to space? Like real shit. Wake up! They gave it their best shot. <laughs> they shot it up there, didn't they? <laughs> Did you hear what they said? It was a disassimilation in mid-flight. Bitch, stop lying. That motherfucker hit that firmament. You lying, hoe. <laughs> Y'all gave it all you got. Y'all put 33 raptors in there. Said, look, look, them 33 was going to be the key to break the firmament. <laughs> but the Lord said no. <laughs> and they going to keep trying. And then they... <laughs> <laughs> Let the church say amen. They going to try to keep on breaking this firm. Did you see how it exploded the minute it hit? What is the explanation? Disassimilation. It exploded in minute. You're lying. That's how y'all know. For all of y'all that thought the earth was round, you just witnessed today that they hit the firmament and they can't get through. Nah, nah, nee, boo, boo. That's going to piss a lot of people off. Ah, the fanboys. Everybody thinks that this week's Apex Summit was about President Xi meeting with President Biden. Nah, think what you want about China. Think what you want about President Xi. You don't have to agree with their policies, but they are smart cookies. And they actually have a pretty keen understanding of who is actually in charge, who gets elected to Congress, who can be president, and who are the ones who actually control US policy making. It's not her, not this guy, certainly not Joe. Now, these are the people who she is really here to meet, the ones who are actually in charge. Follow the money. They're all gonna be there. Boom. You got your ears open? You listening? All you have to do to do any gravity, all you want in any university laboratory in this country 
is make a packed phase conjugate mirror at 100 to 400 hertz. Let me say that again, and I'm not going to answer any questions on it. All you have to do, if you want to make all the anti-gravity you wish to make, and any university laboratory in this country can do it, it's simple, doesn't take much power, is make a pumped phase conjugate mirror between 100 and 400 hertz. Enough said. We got plenty of people making pumped phase conjugate mirrors, and these guys don't ever see any gravity. Why? I just told you, you can do it that way. Am I a fool, or did they miss something? So high energy photons, high frequency photons, are not going to have very much negative times, even when they're antiphotons. They have very little, and anti-gravity depends on negative time. Let's reason together. If in positive time, the assumption in Newton's crazy little gravitational law, attraction of mass, what's the assumption? Positive time. Anybody ever tell you that? No, because they never thought of it. But if you reverse the time, do you not back up the situation? Does now mass not repel? And we have just told you, you can go into the nucleus and start charging the nucleus with pattern including negative time. We have just told you that you had to lose, use low frequency. Why? Because you want a big delta T. You don't want a big delta E. Delta E gets in your way, tears you up. So the optics boys never see this. That is so far in the grass can't even measure it where they're at. They never thought about doing it at 400 hertz. You go home and try it in your laboratory. And then sit on the side laughing for the next two, three hours. And how silly we've all been for years. And how easy it is to do it. I will tell you, if you pursue that, you can take a flashlight battery and levitate a battleship. And I will not discuss that further. Because then you're going to ask me about the Philadelphia experiment. And I'm going to tell you I don't know anything about that. Keep watching. Gravity and anti-gravity were worked out based on only the attraction of mass. Electromagnetics is left out. That's the missing ingredient. Everybody's hunting for how to get it back in. Einstein failed in his vigorous search for it the rest of his life. And the reason was they didn't worry about negative energy. And they didn't worry about negative time. How many physicists have thundered about the second law of thermodynamics? And not a damn one of them has realized that it assumes positive time only. It does not assume negative time, time-reversed critters. Well, a ma magic thing happened in World War II. Radar came into being, and everybody's using radar like mad. The finest mathematicians and the finest physicists and the finest brains on that problem, they coated their snorkels with the RAM material, and they coated their periscopes, and thereupon they didn't get any reflection back. And so we couldn't track them again. They went right back to shooting down our torpedoing ships. What do you do with the radar absorbing material? It's in the open literature. What you do is you slow the wave down until you can get at least a whole wavelength for the correct portion of the wavelength in there. And what you do, reflect back and get it out of phase, cancel. Make, make that zero vector, right? Electromagnetic zero vector. You don't have no electromagnetic reflection. They don't wonder about it or try to detect it or have any detect it if it's a gravitational reflection. So it disappears off your radar. Still sitting there, still absorbing the energy. When you radiate such a material with multiple beams, you have what today is called pumped phase conjugates, four wave mixing. And you get amplification of the tickling wave and you get high amplification of it and you get it with a time reversed wave. As we'll find out later, I'll show you how it works. The Philadelphia experiment left the crew of the USS Eldridge fused together with the ship, still alive but with limbs sealed to the metal, while others were driven mad by what they experienced. In 1943, the US Navy was conducting top secret experiments in the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard designed to render vessels completely invisible to enemy radar by harnessing immense electromagnetic forces. During the first test, the ship became almost invisible with witnesses describing an eerie green-blue glow that surrounded the hull of the ship before the Eldridge disappeared. After it reappeared, the crew complained of severe nausea, but proceeded to recalibrate the equipment for a second test. The second test, however, went wrong. 
As her generator spun up and the ship disappeared in a flash of blue light and reappeared in Norfolk, Virginia, over 200 miles away before disappearing again and reappearing back in Philadelphia. Leaked military documents allege that the Eldridge and her crew experienced reality-bending phenomena, traveled 10 minutes back in time, and crew members suffered mental disorders, and some were uncontrollably phasing in and out of invisibility. After two botched attempts, the Navy abandoned the project and brainwashed the survivors. But the effects of the experiment have lasted much longer. Uh, that, that that visual was creepy as hell, wasn't it? <laughs> That's why I put that one in there. Like it's it gives you more of a sense of like what happened to the people. They said that these people were like absorbed and they were a piece of the, a part of the ship and stuff like that. That's that's a crazy ass experiment. Like, but my question is for y'all: after something like that happens to people, do you think that they continue to do it or not, or did they just shelf it? The SPI rhythms are only draw in terms of how they peak out. They produce literally a spike. 12 August. 12 August. 12 August. In 20 year intervals. Of concern to us. And also. 2003. Here sat the Eldridge until it moved. And here sat the Phoenix Project. It did not move. It was rather well anchored. And in the middle of 63, there's essentially nothing. There's another peculiar thing that happens. you start this business of going through time, let's mark this as 43, let's mark this as 63, and let's mark this as 83. You are looking at it on sidewise again. You're actually a full circle for the 40 years. It takes 40 years ago, the full circle of 20 years where you have a synchronization point or 180 out of phase, which can be represented as a sine wave, like so, with a crossover point in 63. But this, uh, this is a flat representation. This doesn't mean it's reversing polarity per se, but it does. The problem was created, and the problem was created is this, time also has waves. Like a standing wave in electromagnetic theory on an RF transmission line, if you don't damp it properly and its characteristic impedance, let us show theoretically a nice little line where we have RF on it, properly terminated, it's even of constant voltage, and as we say, the standing wave ratio is one. That means you have perfect transmission and there are no waves coming back at you. If this thing is not properly terminated out here in the characteristic impedance of the source and the transmission line, whatever you're using, you start to get funny little things. These things start to build up and you start to come down here to a lower level and you start to build up and you start down to a lower level. You build up standing waves and these things go up and they come back. And when it gets bad enough, you have enormous voltage levels and theoretically, they can go unterminated out of this end. Theoretically, can go to infinity. They don't, for practical reasons. But you get the same problem in time. Ten minutes. Got it. And this means something very extraordinary. If you have standing waves in time, you will find that this time factor starts doing this. The standing waves produce a phenomena of standing waves which go back and forth, and if you start whipping through the 63 point, the crossover point, and create a reverse time wave, you then have in the reality in which you're dealing, the artificial reality as well as coupled to both ends, and most particularly in the 83 end where the Phoenix Project is, you can generate and they were in the process of generating a reverse time wave. 
what happens if you have a forward and reverse time wave hitting the physical Earth at the same time? As I found out very recently, Dr. Van Neumann knew what the problem was and knew what could result. And they had to set up a special team prior to the critical date of 12 August 83 to handle the problem. Had they not found the correct team of scientists, there were four involved, Dr. Van Neumann, a second man whom I know but I will not give the name of because he doesn't want to give him, and two scientists from the future. Yes, I did say the future because with Montauk they could go into the future. From the future, that sounds like the Tomorrow War, right? That's probably where they got that from. They was in the future, they needed help from the past people, and they came through a portal to inform everybody that we met a foe that was, you know, they needed help fighting or it was going to be the end of the world for us. But, you know, watch. This is going to build on something, though. Keep watching. It's good to educate yourself on this type of stuff. Like, just, you know, just check it out. You're going to see where it's going to go. The past. They got a team together. They moved hardware to 1963 to provide damping because they knew that if this thing was not damped sufficiently, at least to a critical level, to prevent the reverse time wave from hitting, do you have any idea what would have happened? They would have torn the entire tectonic plate structure of the North American continent apart, ripped off the entire top level of the North American continent, probably to the Rocky Mountains. To a depth of 500 to 700 feet, the ocean would have roared in and we would have been back in the Stone Age instantly. That is what they faced, and that is what they had to prevent. And since I'm here talking to you today, they prevented it. Or they wouldn't be here, Crazy. any of us. That was the problem they faced, and that is what they did correct. There was a code name for that project. The code name was Atlanticus, not... The Philadelphia experiment, as I previously stated, locked up with the Phoenix project, and it could only lock up on a very critical date. These of the Phoenix project years, um. and someone had to communicate this information to both ends. And this is the thrust of my discussion, and what happened, and why this whole thing locked up, and what some of the mechanics of, and technology of time. claims that the corridor crew guy Nico made saying there was no parallax there actually is proven parallax that you see here um, so that's pretty incredible here that when you see this now let's watch it again we see our orbs we see them spinning look at this very there's definitely purpose here we can see this mouse here moving around um, and now the orientation changes like they're getting ready for something here it changes right here and they go vertical and now they're spinning vertically at slightly at an angle and our drone is somewhere right off the screen over here. Now here it comes. The zap. You see that illumination? Accurately illuminate the clouds. We think that's explained by the particles in the area becoming energized. The leaker moves the video over to the right. Again, we think this is like a Google Earth video playback. And then they close the screen recording. They just close out the screen recording. Now let's look at the other one. Now here's the thermal. So now we're looking at it from the other angle. So that first one was from outer space, looking down, not looking up. And this one now is at a side angle with this MQ-1C. We can see the drone. I mean, you can see it. We can see this high quality uh, clouds as well. We can tell somebody's manually tracking it. We can see the smoke. We can see the, the orbs show up. And here you can see these orbs are perfectly spherical. It's not a metal ball. This is some kind of field around something much smaller. We see these lines in front of it. These lines are in front of the orbs. They're pulling the orbs forward almost, right? Or better explanation is they're creating their own gravity, their own geodesics. You can see the heat signature on the orbs spinning around on their axis. We can see it goes out of field. So like, this is one of the pieces of evidence too that's real as well. Is if this was fake, you're gonna keep the plane in focus. You're not gonna have the plane go out of focus. This is because somebody's manually tracking it. They're not using automatic tracking. Then they zoom in, they wanna get a really good clear shot. And then right before the zap, they zoom out because they know exactly what's about to happen. And then right here, you're going to see these orbs, the monopoles are going to turn towards the middle and it, the orbs are going to converge on the plane. And then the zap happens. So if you fake this, you have to have a better understanding of physics than the experts. Because I've got experts telling me this is exactly what this kind of thing should look like. So some kind of faker is like a master PhD of physics and mathematics to create these perfect patterns. 
Look at that. You see that? Watch the super, super slow-mo here. The orbs actually bend in the last frame because we think they're creating a field here. Gravitational lensing, you can watch the orbs spin and they converge. Look at that converging. The orbs are spinning and they're gonna converge these monopoles. And then they, right in the last frame there, it blurs. Oh crap, I can't get it, but it blurs in the last frame. And that's indication that this plane is accelerating, maybe even accelerating to the speed of light. So pretty wild videos, right? Pretty. You gotta think, yo, like this ain't all just, you know, it's not what you think sometimes, you know, like uh, a lot of people want to turn a blind eye to things and, you know, uh, I understand what we've been through as people, you know, going through life the way that we did and being indoctrinated the way that we have, you know, if we've been taught what to be and how to be instead of us being what we need to be and what we want to be, what we're here to be, you know, there's a big difference. And being consumed with what they wanted us to be, we were we were steered away from a lot of things that connected us with the earth and a lot of things that were healthy for us mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, all of that, you know. And I understand that some people are scared and they don't want certain things to be the, what they are. But, you know, uh, it's not always a, it's not a bad thing to un start to get an understanding for what's going on and what you're being lied to about. And this is just to start a conversation. Y'all let me know if. <laughs> If that was on or something, you know, so, uh, disappearances with airplanes and stuff like that, the Bermuda uh, Triangle. Y'all think they just found out that planes were going to disappear out there in those areas and no trace of the planes or nothing like that, you know, no black box or anything and let that fly? No, they're going to have scientists out there trying to re-engineer, try to figure out what's going on. But let's keep going. Going into this craft, and what are you thinking when you're inside of it? Like, what are you seeing? It's um, it's a very ominous feeling because it's there are no. At first of all, everything is one color. It's like a dark pewter color, and there are no right angles anywhere. It's as if somebody took. A, I've said this before. Somebody took a, a model out of and fashioned it out of wax Crazy. and then heated it just for a short time so everything melted. Everything looks like it's fused together. Everything has a radius of curvature where two uh, items meet. It's, uh, it's a really weird looking thing. But um, uh, there was almost nothing other than a small foldable hatchway that, um, that looked recognizable. Everything was, uh, was really unworldly to pick on it, a way to describe it. So you, you get inside this thing and it's designed for something that's much smaller than a human being. Yeah, you can't really stand up till you get to the very center of and it. And how tall are you? I'm 5'10". And what do you think this was designed for? I'd say something close to half my height. Wow. So these little three foot tallish creatures. Yeah, and it, the, the seats were small too. I mean, obviously it was made, you know, for something, something small. But there is no, like there's, there's nothing else in there. There's just seats, the reactor, and some of the subcomponents. There's no, there's no control panels. There's no bathroom. There's no, no decorative uh, components or artwork or anything that you would recognize or trim. I mean, it's just a very bare bones thing. Hello, my name is Alfred Bailick more commonly known as Al Bielik. Original family name is Edward Cameron. I have been involved in the Philadelphia Experiment, the Montauk Project, time travel, alien connections of the Montauk Project, and some other projects, all of which have been secret over the years, most of which have never been declassified. I wound up in the 28th century. And this was in a time period of uh, 2749 to 2751 AD. Talk about changes in civilization, society, and everything else. It was drastically changed from what we saw in 2137, as this is now 600 years later. The cities were enormous. The cities were beautiful. They had ground-based cities, much as we have always had them. But they also had something else 
floating cities. Floating cities, due to anti-gravity, techniques being perfected sufficiently that they could float an entire city, which is perhaps not as large as any of our current cities. It was round, or very nearly round, but it floated on this platform and they could move the city any place they wanted remaining floating in the air, four or 5,000 feet above the ground perhaps, or a little less, depending on what they wanted. But the size of the city was vertical rather than horizontal, 2,200 stories high. That's about two and a half miles. The cities could move anywhere on the planet. Basically, they stayed hovering and floating. But if they didn't like a particular location, they moved somewhere else. There wasn't that much traffic in moving cities, I can assure you, because the world population in that era, the 28th century, was only 500 million, and I was instructed later that that was where they had held it for centuries. There would be no more than approximately 500 million population. Some of the features of this, let's, let's start from the political standpoint. As I learned, all of these cities, whether they're ground-based cities, uh, which the majority were, because they had to do manufacturing, they had to have agriculture and various other things to supply the needs of civilization. But all of them, whether floating or ground-based, were rather interesting in their governmental form. They had essentially no government. There's no government as we know it today. There was no money, there was no banks, there was no political jurisdictions, and there was ended up resulted, uh, resolved down to what would be best called a city-state structure, where the city is the state. And any other cities of, from that one are independent and operate in their own independent manner. So that was the major change there. There was no elected government, there was no appointed government, there was no government as we had ever seen it in the past. As I found out, each city was run by an intelligent computer, synthetic intelligence, synthetic consciousness, a highly radioactive crystalline structure who built them. I had no idea, nobody seemed to know that they'd been there for hundreds of years. And this computer ran the entire city. There were guidelines set down, there were laws, law books, but no courts. There were guidelines set down as to how you were to behave, what your parameters were. Within these parameters, if anything went, anything was not considered a kosher within this realm, this parameter limit, would be expressed as a yellow zone, a zone that you don't want to go into and you don't want to become involved in that type of behavior. If you got out of that area, you were given a, an invite for a reprimand to the computer, which there was one in every city, running each city. To, you would literally be called in for, a, shall we say, an interview or an audience with the computer, and it would, you would be advised that you had broken the law, but it wasn't considered a felony, it was a misdemeanor, and a misdemeanor and such. If you were judged guilty, you were sent off to one of the work camps for whatever purpose uh, they did in the work camps. Uh, pretty much like today, I presume, where any kind of labor, menial or otherwise, had to be done, was done. And that was compulsory, that was not voluntary. If you were called in because you had gone outside the yellow zone into what is called the red zone, which is basically what you would today call a felony offense, you were immediately called in for an interview, you were examined, looked at, talked to, and if the computer, at that point, thought that you were rehabilitable, that you could learn again to be sociable and within the social bounds of normalcy, you were given one more chance. If the computer decided that you were not capable of fitting into society, you were, you were terminated right then and there. Now there were other people who didn't feel like they could fit into the society, but had not yet committed any of the so-called offenses. Literally, they were allowed to leave, I think. The word was, if you don't like it here, go. Go live somewhere else. Go out in the boonies if you want. Live as a hermit. We don't care. And many did. I do not know what percentage. I was told that quite a lot of people had left the cities and gone out in the boondocks. Whether they formed communities or not, I never did find out. And if you weren't required to work, which no one was required to, other than their social obligation, which was well inculcated into the kids, that you had an obligation to, to contribute to society to pay for what you have been using and had inherited, for which no money was involved. A sort of credit system was still functional, but otherwise, except for fairly large credit purchases, if that is the right term, they didn't really keep track of very much. It was considered quite free as long as you were able to make some contributions and, and nobody overloaded the system with demands. That happened very seldom, that there was an overload of demand for goods and services. So as a result of that, there was very little abuse of the system. Now, in this period of time, talking with many people, making friends, I had a number of questions. Who built this computer system? That was my first and foremost question. Who maintains it? Uh, what happens when it breaks down? Very common questions. No common answer. Uh, and very much.
much uncommon answers. First question about the cities, who built them, who maintains them, who maintains the computers, was rather hard to answer and get an answer to. No one really knew much about the history of the construction of the city or how it ran, other than the computer, and you couldn't request an interview. You couldn't request to go in and ask questions. The aspect of how these computers communicated with each other was unknown, but it did make, the one I talked with did make a number of interesting statements over a period of time. They had been around for about 200, 250 years in this format and this system. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I ain't fucking with that at all. Like, not at all. You know, that sounds like a, a one world, like government type thing. And did you peep the floating technology, the floating cities that we talked about during this video and everything? Uh, Y'all let me know in the comments down below if you are, you know, if you're willing to do something like that. I, I, that's deep you know everything changed you feel me but you didn't have to work but then you did have to work so they strong arm you like and then they can terminate you for doing stuff like just the computer said that this is giving me this is giving me moonfall vibes y'all seen the movie moonfall when the civilization was built our answer what well, was the movies built off of basically our ancestors built these moons and the civilization that was just like that right there a computer was you know, taking care of mostly everything and the computer got tired at one point and rebelled and the computer started consuming everything and it was killed their civilization and they had to jump, they had to go to another planet and, you know, basically seed us on another planet so that that entity couldn't come back and find us. That'd be crazy if that was like real life and then the computer gonna come back and take control of us and eat us and shit again. But that's 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 crazy. If y'all haven't watched Moonfall, y'all go watch that, man. It's crazy. It's giving me Moonfall vibes, man. And then the moon been out here doing unmoonly things and stuff like that. Just running from random ass stars in the sky, disappearing for a couple of days. The moon, man, look. Unusual artifact appears over the Philippines just before a major earthquake struck. A 6.7 magnitude earthquake has rocked the southern Philippines. At least one person. Authorities say the quake struck off Mindanao Island at a depth of 60 kilometers. What I want to draw your attention to, though, is something that's going on in the composite, which is a microwave beam of some kind comes out of the Philippines or Indonesia, and it arches up and then back down into the center of where the rotation then really begins to pick up and you see it gets dark here. Pay particular attention to an arc which appears here and around this area. Here, you saw that line start to appear there. I believe that's been partially doctored out, but it's still there, you can see it. And you'll see lines come straight from the south up to this area. And then that, then it's, there's a straight beam that comes from the south. You can see the massive effect, and you'll see an increase there in the moisture content and the heating that's taking place. Northern part of New Zealand, right here, this giant pulse actually came across the Pacific and zeroed down to this point in northern New Zealand. And again, the time date stamp on that was on uh, August 31st going into September 1st when that occurred. And I issued a warning to my viewers telling everybody, you know, I don't know what this means, but we do need to watch out for possible earthquake activity to strike the area. Now I'm gonna bring you over here to Earthquake 3D. And we're gonna show you the earthquakes that have happened over the past three and four days. And you'll see here, of course, on Earthquake 3D that there are several large earthquakes that have struck just off the north coast of New Zealand. And it had been many months since we'd seen any 6.0 or greater activity in this area. And right in the general area where that giant pulse went down to right on September 1st, well, a few days later, an earthquake swarm strikes near the same location.
conducting experiments on the ionosphere during an intense solar storm. What could possibly go wrong? We took an M-class solar flare just a bit ago, and of course there's the big corona hole turning across central heliographic longitudes. The impacts to Earth have begun as well. The solar wind shows we've taken a couple interplanetary shock waves the last day, and they are amplifying geomagnetic conditions as seen by several magnetometers on the ground and on satellites like the ones on GOES. Big disruption to the field from these events. We are taking the latest impact just here this morning. Geomagnetic storms are expected today and are expected to continue into the upcoming week since the coronal hole stream will soon impact right on the heels of these CME shock waves. Eyes on the aurora the next couple of days, and also it was the incoming sunspot on the south where the M-class flare occurred. We'll be watching it for more activity today. A lot going on, y'all. I'm sorry. Truth hidden in plain sight, bro. I enjoy watching movies or shows that as I'm watching them, they'll say like a fact or something. Yeah. And I'll be like, wait, let me look that up to see if it's real. And I look it up and it's real. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is getting tasty. I was watching this um, series called The House of Usher, I believe. Is the name of the series? Oh. And this happened a lot in this series. Like, they would mention things, and I'm like, is that real? And then I look it up, and I'm like, that's real. So, this next clip that I'm going to show you talks about hollow earth, talks about celestial beings, about the trans-globe expedition, bro. And as I'm watching the show, I'm like, ooh, let me go down this rabbit hole. So, I literally had to pause the show as I went down the deepest rabbit hole looking into the Trans Globe Expedition and everything that I just heard with this clip that I'm about to show you. But this show covers a lot of other things other than this. It talks about the pharmaceutical industry, bro, about... It goes deep into that. And all these things that they're mentioning, I'm sitting here Googling it, statistics and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, that's kind of making this show real, so... Watch this clip right here and let me know what you think in the comments. But before I put this clip on, make sure you show your brother some love and hit that like, follow, share. Come on, save this. You remember the Trans Globe Expedition? 79 to 82, circumnavigated the globe. UK to the South Pole, to the North Pole, and home again, around the world. I remember. 100,000 miles. Across the Sahara, swamps and jungles of Mali and the Ivory Coast, unexplored crevasse fields in Antarctica, the Northwest Passage. Graveyard of so many famous adventurers. And then, into the <laughs> hazards of the Arctic Ocean. I remember it, Roger. Arthur was there. He was barely 25. He put law school on hold to elbow his way onto the expedition, and he saw the fucking world. While you and I were dicking around with our petty little dramas and we were digging in the basement of Fortunato, Arthur Gordon Pym was bending the planet over and taking his piece. The things he saw, and he'll talk about them too, to a point. Always stops telling it as he gets to the North Pole. It used to be a fun game when the kids grew up trying to finish Arthur's story. I like to think he killed someone. I like to think he's eaten human flesh. I like to think he took a piss on the tip top of the world. Guy can dream? <laughs> he told one of my kids that the earth was hollow. And I don't even know if he was lying. He was lying. He told Tammy the earth was hollow. And that he found an island at the top of the world that he called Ultima Thule, and that it was the realm of beings who lived beneath us out of time and out of space. Cute. Yo, 
Oh man, let me know how y'all feel about that. I gotta uh, catch up on that show right there. Like, it seems interesting. I want to put that on there to like, you know, give y'all something to watch and, you know what I'm saying, children. And, and a lot of y'all do research to these type of videos. I read the comments. Look, I do too. You know, I be sitting there, I see something, I hear something. I mean, man, let me go look this up. Boom. And like, damn, then look, that's how you go down a rabbit hole. All of a sudden, you, your ass turned into Bugs Bunny, and you go down a rabbit hole, goddamn. Like, it, it, it's like that sometimes. But that's how you come to, you know, find new information and things that'll help you in life you know uh it, it is what it is but look man let me know if y'all enjoyed this video how y'all thought about it you know uh it, it explains why certain things could be possible not saying that that's 100 percent you know uh you know some of this shit could be speculation conspiracy whatever you want to call it but it's a conversation starter and just you know for us to have these conversations and come to conclusions on what we think is going on with our planet and the things going on around us you know this is an outlet for like-minded individuals to share good vibes and positive energy all the time but you also can get these knuckles if uh you know what i'm saying you out of line don't ever forget that we are beings that can process information at a way higher level than we do today and also just because you're a positive person a nice person doesn't mean that you should be out here getting taken advantage of and let people do things to you you act accordingly in these times you know so yeah always protect yourself and protect your energy and, and your family and then ones around you but look like i always say spread love because there's too much hate in this world love you guys i'll see you on the next video and i'm out though Bye.